this is guitarist Dennis Teeth, and I want to welcome you to the unboxing and review of the Fender SC112 speaker cabinet. Okay, and it's got a Celestian, I think the, was it G12P80 or something like that. It's an 8 ohm speaker. And it's just arrived. Okay, and I'm outside. It's kind of cold out, actually. You know, uh, but look, here it is. Wow, look at that. Open this end. This end up. Wow. An official fender box. Look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take it out of the box. All right? An official unboxing. Now don't try this at home, you know. This is only for experienced professionals. Okay. Um alright, hold on one second. Okay, I've moved it to a table here. And one thing you'll notice is it's actually, uh, the box says it's made in Mexico. What do you know? Here we go. <laughs> it's got these staples in it. So we got the box opened here. Let's see what we get. Oh heck yeah! Very nice. It's got these little styrofoam things, <clears throat> and it's wrapped in plastic. It looks like. Um, so I think I can just yank it out of there and that will almost complete the unboxing. Okay, here we go. Uh, there it is. Uh, very nice. We'll take that inside, of course. Okay, I guess because it's brand new, the handle is kind of stiff. And what else do we get in the box? Wait, look at this. Mm. Two year limited warranty. Very nice. And it's a little coupon for free online lessons. I probably need those. <laughs> okay, let's see. Power handling, 80 watt continuous, input impedance, 8 ohm, 112 inch Celestian G12P80 speaker. Okay, weight, 28 pounds. It's not too shabby. Um, use a speaker cable. Only connect the speaker load that complies with your amplifier's minimum impedance. Caution! Fender amplifiers and loudspeaker systems are capable of producing very high sound pressure levels, which may cause temporary or permanent hearing damage. Use care when setting and adjusting volume levels during use. Very important there. Uh, close back for increased bass response. Wow. Mates perfectly with the Super Champ X2 head 
or other quality amplifier. I don't know, I'm not sure I want my cabinets mating with anything. You know? Uh, well, that's a little odd, you know? I don't know. Anyway. Alright. So, I guess I'll keep this, take it inside and file it away. You know, you never know. It may come apart on me and I'll have to ship it back. So now I'm going to store this official fender box for later use. You know. Okay, well I'm back inside because it's cold out there. And I went ahead and brought the Fender SC 112 cabinet inside. I haven't taken it out of the plastic wrapping yet. Um, I want it to acclimatize to the warmer weather inside, you know, the warmer temperature inside. Now, you know, um, I didn't just order this speaker cabinet, you know, willy-nilly at all. There was a lot of thought behind it, <laughs> you know. Uh, a lot of uh, research and shopping around and things. And um, I actually sold a an older uh, rack mount multi-effects unit, you know, to finance the purchase of this cabinet. And I took advantage of the easy pay, right? So in the end, I basically paid... $73 this month and then in January and February I'll have a payment of $73 so that's really not too bad you know um, and you know by selling that effects processor it basically pretty much pays for the purchase of the cabinet you know, um, so it's not like it's a huge investment. Now, when I was shopping around, I saw that there was a Friedman 1x12, and it was $599. And I would be hard to believe that it would sound $400 better than this little Fender cabinet, you know. And in fact, the closest thing to it, you know, was a PV Viper 1x12 cabinet with a Blue Marble speaker, you know. Um, and it was uh, $129. Uh, but that seemed kind of silly to me because I already had one SC-112 Fender cabinet, you know, um, and basically it, it came with a the Super Champ X2 head, you know, so in other words, I already had one of the Fender, so I kind of knew what to expect, especially sound-wise, um, so it made sense, to, you know, because I wanted a matching pair, um, because for the clean sounds I always play in stereo if I can you know especially if I end up using uh, delays and things you know um, so it was kind of a no-brainer I guess as far as that now I could have um, gone up to a um, Ignator 112 cabinet that was the next closest one, but and it was two hundred forty-nine dollars. You know, um, you know, but I didn't want mismatched cabinets. You know, um, now other cabinets worthy of consideration, of course, are then the um, the EVH, right? 
um, one by twelve cabinet at three sixty nine. The orange cabinet at three seventy nine. You know, um, and I guess before that there was a, a black star, and I really like black star. And it was at three or I'm sorry two seventy nine. You know, but at the under two hundred dollar level, there's not much. Quite frankly, you know, um, which I find very surprising, really. You know, especially, you know, with the quality that you get with the, the Fender, you know, and the Celestian speaker. And it's, it's a good enough cabinet that, you know, you, you, you won't really want to swap out the speaker, you know, because it's flubbing out or that kind of thing at all, you know. Um, of course, you can always buy an aftermarket speaker, you know, whatever, you know, cannabis racks or what have you, and put it inside the cabinet if you wanted to, um, you know, to improve the sound if you need it to. But I think it just sounds great as it is, you know, with a... Uh, the Celestian speaker in there is really fine, you know, um, I just don't see any need to replace the speaker of it. So what am I going to use this speaker cabinet for? Well, um, planned uses for this cabinet and why I wanted to, as I mentioned, I play in stereo. Okay, um... So, in other words, I use two amplifiers, usually. Okay? And, um... For one, I have the X2 head, which requires a cabinet, of course. Um, the other thing is I have an X2 combo with that 10-inch speaker, and I'd, I'd very much like the sound of the 12-inch speaker. Right? So I can use it for that. The other thing is, and this is... A future project is I have a gigantic stereo chorus 212 okay and I mean this thing is a freaking monster it is so heavy you know I mean you can't take it anywhere or, it's a big big amplifier um, and what you could do, right, it's a, it's a 2 by 12 it's got two speakers, right, because it's a stereo kind of chorus amp, and I really like it, you know, even though it's solid state and so on, um, it reminds me very much of a, kind of a Roland JC120 type of amp, but what you could do is, you know, um, take out the amplifier part, make it a head, and then use the two Fender speakers, you know, um, the two cabinets. And now, all of a sudden, it's, you know, it's really, you can move it around a lot easier, you know, um, that kind of thing. So, that was another consideration. And I, I just, I like the sound of the speaker cabinets, you know. I mean, I don't know what to say about that. It's really awesome. Um, I've also found it very useful, too. You know, for example, a friend of mine loaned me his Black Star um, little 20 HT head. Right, and to well to review it and things, I need a cabinet. So there now I've got the cabinet. Not that I could have used my other cabinet, you know. Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to justify the my purchase, and I think it was a, a pretty sound purchase because, um, as I mentioned, you know. Um, I really like playing in stereo 
the clean channel and having two um, speakers. And I have found that, um, you know, matching cabinets, um, you know, sounds very nicely balanced, you know, uh, for that. And as another experimentation, remember those little mini orange amps, right? I mean, they're like 20 watt and they have a little 8 inch speaker, right? Which, by the way, I thought that was funny. You could actually buy a little orange 1x8 <laughs> speaker cabinet. And I'm sure it sounds very good because it's very much like what these little mini orange amps are. However, <coughs> what you could do is um, basically because um, it's 8 ohm cabinet, I think that you could actually take a um, you'd have to make this, of course. You know, is take a speaker jack, right, and make an external speaker for it, and so that you can actually use the cabinet with it. And you know, that's a lot of fun, and sometimes surprisingly good sound is by taking a, a little tiny amp and running it into a cabinet. You know. Uh, using an external speaker. If it doesn't have a jack, you can add one. In fact, there's tons of videos on YouTube where you can do just that, you know. Uh, I know, I remember I saw one that was uh, for the Boss Katana. I think it was either the 100 watt or the 50 watt. And the guy basically just, um, you know, did exactly that, just put an external jack right and, and now you could plug in his you know the katana uh, into a speaker cabinet you know. so very pleased very pleased um, and I highly recommend it um, you know now I have to admit that I've never heard a Friedman one by twelve cabinet, you know. But my goodness, five hundred ninety-nine dollars. That's an expensive cabinet for a little one by twelve. You know. Um, I think for you know, right the under two hundred dollar level, you know. Uh, I don't see that there's anything else you could buy, really. You know, unless you wanted to make one yourself, that type of deal. You know. And I mean, I could have gone that route as well, but I already had one of the cabinet, so it made sense to me to, to get another. You know. Um, I have to admit, I do like the Cannabis Rec speaker, and I've often thought of buying a Cannabis Rec speaker and just putting it into a cabinet, you know. Um, that would be very interesting as well. Um, but I have to admit, though, I, I don't know. Uh, I think maybe it's just the way the cabinet is built or what have you. Um, but man, those little Fender cabinets, the SC-112 are so punchy. It's a good word to describe it, you know. And I remember when I played, you know, replaced the speaker in an X2 combo with a cannabis rack, you know, I never got that real punchy sound that I found in the SC-112. All right, so lastly, I guess we'll hook it up. And see how it sounds. Okay, I'm back in my studio room, and I brought the SC-112. 
And as a bonus, besides the unboxing, we're going to get an unwrapping video. Wow. Now, if that's not a stocking stuffer, I don't know what is. Okay, so I've got the cabinet here, and I'm going to go ahead and unwrap it. Now, careful. You don't want to attempt this at home. Only trained professionals. Here we go. So there it is. It's not bad at all. Very nice. Uh-oh, there's a tag here. What does it say? California. Proposition 65 warning. Warning. Cancer and reproductive harm. Uh-oh. So let's get rid of that tag. There we go. Get rid of that. Here you go. And it's very much like the X2. You'll notice here the uh, Tolex, right? It's kind of folded over here. Right there, you get that kind of lip. Um, part of the course, I mean, every Fender X2 is the same way that I've seen anyway. You know, but it works. It's fine. Um, here we go. And so on the back, it's very simple. Uh, you basically have a um, a jack, right? A little jack plate there. There we go. A jack plate there, and a little tag there as a serial number, and it's called the SC112 enclosure. I've been calling it a cabinet this whole time. Well, anyway, we get the idea. All right. Now the final step. I guess it's got this little cardboard thing. I'll leave it on for now. You know, eventually it'll be removed, though. Um, and we're going to plug it in and take a listen. Okay. And remember, the only other thing that was available... At the time was the PV Viper 112 enclosure with a blue marble speaker at, at 129. And then the next step up from this one at 199 was with a you know, which has a Celestian here was an Ignator. But you know, that was already $249, almost $250. So, at the $200 or under level, I mean, this is basically it, you know, and it sounds really great, but let's find out, to, just to be sure. So, I have an X2 combo here, and I've unplugged the internal speaker, and we're going to run it through this cab and take a listen. Now, one thing, because uh, it's a brand new speaker cabinet, you know, the speaker isn't broken in yet. Okay, and that'll take a few hours of playing, definitely. Uh, which is fine. You know. Um, handles nice and solid. No problem there. Should last for years before you have to replace it. Mm. I have to say, I've run into many, many, many cabinets and amps where they kind of skimp on the handle and a breaking that's terrible whereas here you know the only way that's going to break is if it you know rots out or something over time or gets damaged somehow all right let me hook it up and we'll try it out okay so i've got it hooked up here 
and it's uh, hooked up to a Fender um, Super Champ X2 combo. And just for this test, um, I put the EQ of the bass and treble at five, right? So basically a neutral, and the reverb at three. Okay, and the volume is at about three and a half on the little X2 combo. Remember, it's a 15 watt tube amp. And we've got it plugged into this uh, Fender Super Champ, or I'm sorry, the Fender SC112 speaker enclosure, 12 inch speaker. So let's hear it. Keep in mind, this is a neck position. If I try the bridge. It's a little stiff because it's, you know, brand new right out of the box. Um, it'll, once the speaker breaks in, you know, it'll sound even a little better than this. But it's quite impressive, I mean. Speakers heavy duty, um, you know, 80 watt um, capacity, and we're running a 15 watt tube amp, you know, so we can get plenty loud. I mean, this is a, I hit the strings real hard, uh, right, or even this does uh, And just to try, I mean, I'll turn it up a little bit more than this. Now I got a little Fender X2 at about six. And that's pretty darn loud right there. Let's let's see what happens. start to break up just a tiny bit. You know? combo you know 
And it's kind of breaking up because it's, you know, I'm driving that preamp too loud. About four and a half. There you go, notice there's no rattle. You know, and usually on cheaper cabinets, that's the thing you gotta watch out is um, where the cabinet actually rattles. You know, mostly due to the construction. So even though this isn't, you know, the finest uh, swamp ash, you know, or birch cabinet. Um, it's well constructed, you know, to avoid any kind of, a, a, you know, rattling. breaking in a little better already. Um. But that's what I was going to say, if there's any rattling, it's not coming from the speaker or the cabinet, but it's coming from all the stuff I have all over the place here in the studio room. You know, and that's when the keep in mind, you know, um, you want to try to keep rattle, you know, to a minimum, and if you've got loose stuff around, you know, or even some of the furniture, you know, if it's not real solid, it'll rattle, and you don't want that, you know. Uh, punchy, well-balanced sound. Now, listen, I've heard cabinets that are bassier, you know, but unnaturally so, and uh, as a result, a real unbalanced sound, you know, and you've got to kind of EQ the bass out, you know. 
here that's not the case at all and remember I have the EQ just on five so I can make it a little bassier or a little brighter and so on but just neutral the cabinet itself sounds very very good okay that's the bridge I've dialed it back to about five, you know, before the point of break up here. That's quite loud. And the next position. Thank you. 
because of the handling capability, you could use a larger amp, you know, if you really needed more volume on that, you know. Um, but here, just a, you know, a 15 watt little X2 combo, you know, powers it fine and it really sounds great. You know, and the cabinet isn't rattling, the speaker isn't overworked, you know, about to flub out or whatever. If anything, the limitation would be the, the little amplifier. You know, and that makes stuff around rattle. You know, and, you know, I don't know, maybe you do need the, you know, three Marshall full stacks, 100 watt, you know, full stacks. Um, I don't know, because when I see the Cure, right, on YouTube and they're playing these gigantic festivals, you know, with thousands and thousands of people, and yet, you know, Robert Smith is just using the little uh, rolling, little, they look like little cube amps, you know, they're tiny. So it makes you question. And then I saw Robert Trower, and he's got six Marshall full stacks, you know. Especially these days when, you know, people are miking amps a lot the PAs are, are so good these days so this might be just the thing um, and I'll tell you what I'd much rather carry a couple of these than I would you know a couple of oversized 212 cabinets I'll tell you that right now That's, they're gigantic you know I mean especially in my living room and I can hardly walk around because of that you know, the, the, I have a 212 in there, it's so big, you know. So this is very nice, it's nice and compact. Sound quality is very good, uh, bass response is great, you know. Um, granted, it doesn't sound like a 4x12, you know, the bass response, but it's well balanced, you know. And I've often found that, as I said, you know, bass here, cabinets you know you can be amazed at the bass but it's such an unbalanced sound between the bass mid and highs you know um, I guess it depends what you're going for I mean, if you want to sound like a you know like you're playing through a bass amp I guess that'd be the thing to do I don't know anyway this works great for me uh, very pleased um, inexpensive you know um, I'm sure this isn't the highest quality you know swamp ash birch pine cabinet or what have you you know <laughs> this is probably just some MDF stuff and the Tolex job is just okay you know it's got that fold that all X2 type amps have, but it works, it does the job, you know, um, I don't know, but I'll tell you what, I know this much, I know that for the sound quality that you get for 200 bucks, you know, and the portability of it and the sound quality, I mean, and it's a good looking cabinet too, I have to admit, it really is sharp you know, classic, you know, um, yeah, for $200, I mean, you really can't go wrong, and that's new price, you know, and it's closed back, which is great, it's, so I'm very pleased, I'm thrilled, in fact, and, man, if you're running two of these, you know, I just don't see that um, you would need more than that, you know. I'm quite confused, really, in a way. Um, 
I mean, I love the sound of a 412 cabinet. You know, it's awesome. Real big sound. You know, but I also think when you're, you know, you're miking a 412, you're not, you're not getting, you know, the the full sound quality of the 412. And actually, a 112 can sound just as good. You know. Um, now, this $600 Friedman cabinet is $599. Friedman 112. Now, wait a minute. Are you telling me it's going to sound $400 better than this? Nah, I don't know about that. I'm not sure I buy that at all. I wonder if you're not just paying for the name. You know, I mean, I, you know, for $600, it better be pretty darn good. I mean, you would expect a certain amount of, you know, decent quality sound, right? For that price, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Without comparing one next to another, you never know. I guess. But to me, that's you know beyond my budget for sure. And here, you know, especially with the easy payment plan and the fact that I sold that multi-effects unit um, makes this quite a bargain really you know uh, you know and if I don't abuse it it should last for years and years and years you know and so I'll be careful with it um, you know and I mean if you're going to do a lot of traveling with it you could consider getting a cover for it you know Makes sense, you know. Um, I remember I saw the, I think they're called Tukey covers, and they make custom amp covers and speaker covers. And they're quite expensive, and I always thought, man, I don't know, that seems awfully expensive, you know. But then I got a a PB Stereo Chorus 212, and it had one of those covers, and I'll tell you something. They are really, man, they're substantial, is what I'm trying to say. They're really thick and pretty impressive, actually, you know. Um, so as far as an investment goes, I mean, this, these could last for a very long time. Um, and so, you know, especially if we're going to be taking it places, um, you know, getting a cover wouldn't be crazy, you know. Um, it avoids the nicks and the Tolex and that kind of thing. You know, I mean, the Tolex stuff is pretty, you know, hardcore. It can take a lot of abuse. But when you start nicking it and things, then it starts to kind of not flake off, but kind of, you know, you got to re-glue stuff. And, you know, but I mean, that should be years and years down the road. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. And it's got the Fender logo. You know, I've been down that road before. And it's a plastic logo. I, I would have preferred a metal logo, I guess. Does it really matter? No. And as long as it doesn't break, you know. I remember I had that. What was it? It was a Champion 100. And it was a special edition, a red one. And I really liked that amp. Um, but it had a plastic logo, and one time I was walked by, and man, snapped that thing right in half. You know, and ended up ordering a a logo online. I made a video of this, you know, if you look it up, and I got this vintage logo, and it was really cool. It was metal. It was a lot bigger, really, but it looked so cool on that app. Um, so I guess that's something you could do to this cabinet if you really wanted to. Wow, I'm I'm knocked out. I just think that's great. You know? Um, and most importantly, for that two hundred dollars, you get a speaker cabinet where you're not immediately thinking, Oh man, I gotta swap out this speaker. It's terrible. 
you know, it's not like that at all, it's not flubbing out, you know, <coughs> it's real solid, you know, and the cabinet's good because it's avoiding any kind of rattling, well worth it, you know, whereas the X2 combo, the little 10 inch stock speaker, I think is, is has a good sound, but it flubs out, you know, very easily at louder volumes, you know. Whereas this doesn't do that at all, you know, because that Celestian speaker, I guess. Anyway. Yeah, and I guess in the future, if you really wanted to, you know, you could swap out the speaker and you'd still have a very nice cabinet if you had a problem with a stock speaker. But personally, I, re I like the sound. I think it's really great. Well-balanced, punchy. Very cool. Okay, that's it. See you next time. Bye.